So we'll take a look at estimating a population standard deviation where data is provided and you will see data that we used previously about estimating a doctor office visit copay on average for HMOs. So prior we had estimated the mean copay and now what we're interested in how much do copays vary across different HMOs. So it says a random sample of 16 HMOs was selected. For each HMO, the copayment in dollars for a doctor's office visit was reported. So we have our data. Under the assumption that copayment amounts are normally distributed, so the original variable, the amount, has to be a normal distribution, and this is just the requirement in order to move forward. So we're not going to be studying the amounts, we'll be studying the variation in the amounts, and we'll be looking for a 90% confidence interval for the variation as defined by its standard deviation. All right, so obviously in our sample, there's a variety, and Let's start with our sample size. So we've got 16 HMOs. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in our degrees of freedom here. So degrees of freedom and minus one. So 16 minus one gives us 15 degrees of freedom. And we will be constructing a 90% confidence interval. So I will get to our critical values in a second, but I want to first deal with the standard deviation for this sample. So when we're given data in order to ensure our accuracy matches what you will need to have on Alex, I'll show you how to get the sample variance. And the first step, of course, if you have data, is you need to get that data into your calculator. So it may still be in your calculator from before, so these were those HMO copay amounts. So you enter your data into L1. And then because we have sample data, we certainly know the sample standard deviation. And we don't have to do that by hand. The calculator can do that for us. So we can use one bar stats to find S. So eventually here, I'm actually going to write down the variance, which would be the value for S and then squared, so sample variance. All right. So let's go ahead and run one bar stats. So stat calculate one bar stats. And our sample standard deviation, it says carry immediate values to three decimal places. Now, actually, in order to get S squared, the sample variance to be as accurate as possible, what we're gonna do here is not round S. So we've got some decimals showing and I wanna take all of the decimals displayed as S and then we wanna square it. So the longer way of doing it would be to actually use all those decimals. You could just type them in again, four, two, one, two, six, zero, zero, three, and you could square that. So in order to maintain our accuracy, we wanna use all those values for S and then square it. But because we ran one of our stats, this value for S is already stored in the calculator. So I'm just gonna show you how to get the S on the screen. So after we do the one bar stats, if you select your variable button, so variables, bars, and then we go down to choice five statistics, and you'll see S, the sample standard deviation. I'll hit enter. So that value on the screen has stored all of these lovely decimal places for us. So S squared, we just have to square S, so S squared, And now I can round to this intermediate value request. So when we create our confidence intervals, now we can write three decimal, 5.863. 
So what we're doing is making sure that S squared is as accurate as we need it to be by not rounding the value for S. So if you get a problem with data, please just do this, run one of our stats, find S squared, and then you can round to whatever they specify for intermediate values. All right, so we've got our S squared, and then let's complete our picture for the confidence. So we're looking for 90% confidence, and alpha is one minus our confidence level. So 0 0.10 or 10%. And then we divide that by two to get the area in each tail. And so now I know that this area is alpha over two, 0 0.05. And this area is alpha over two, 0 0.05. And you're just checking that you've separated the graph into three parts. And when you add up the three parts, you get one. So that's our sketch. And then we are interested in finding these chi-square values that create this graph. And you can just call it chi-square left and chi-square right. So chi-square right. We're looking up 0 0.05 in the table. Chi-square left, we look up the complement. So one minus alpha over two. So officially people call this one chi-square 0 0.95 alpha over two. And this one is chi squared alpha over two, 0 0.05. All right. So you're welcome to just write chi square left and chi square right. This kind of helps again enforce that to find these values, you're going to the one minus alpha over two in the table and the alpha over two in the table. So let's do that, degrees of freedom 15. So let me start with the uh, areas. So again, this graph or this table, sorry, is symmetric about the center line. So the answers will always come in pairs. So 0 0.05, right, 0 0.05 should partner with its complement on the other side of the table. So these guys are complements. And then we're coming down to row 15 for degrees of freedom. So we've got our complements and then reading down, there's our chi-square left on the left side of the table. And then there's our chi-square right on the right side of the table. So that's the easy way to remember which one is chi-square left and which is chi-square right. But also chi-square left is always the smaller of the two because this is a number line. So 7.261, I will make this larger in a second, 7.261. And the other one was 24.996. All right. So let me get that bigger here. Okay, so those chi-square values separate the middle 90% from the area in these tails. Okay, and then we're ready to make our confidence interval. Now we're gonna do it a little differently than we did in our last problem because we have data, but I'm just gonna get the formula here. So N minus one S squared, over chi squared right, less than sigma, less than the square root of n minus one s squared over chi squared left. So in order to maintain our accuracy, I had you find s squared already. So s squared, we already did the squaring of the S, so we're just going to substitute 
So square root and n minus one was 15. And I already forgot the number, 5.863. So don't square it again. We already took care of squaring it above. So that is the sample variance. And then we divide by chi square right. So that's our lower limit. And then for our upper limit, the numerator is the same, but we divide by chi square left. All right, and then type those in. So we have 15 times 5.863 divided by 24.996. And now we're ready for our final answer. And they asked us to round answers when we're done to one decimal place. So that will be 1.9 less than sigma. And then our upper limit that is 3.5. All right, so based on a sample of 16 HMOs, we estimate with 90% confidence that the true standard deviation of all HMO doctor office visit copay amounts is between 1.9 and 3.5 and the units here were dollars. So again, we're not as estimating the cost of a visit on average. We're estimating how much variation there is in these costs. And that is our estimate for the population standard deviation. All right, so you know what to do if they give you data. You want to find S squared and then put that in the formula. And it's just worth mentioning that the last problem we did, rather than giving us data, they just gave us S. And so in this case, when they gave us sample standard deviation, I waited till later to square. So I just put in the S and then I squared it here. So this method is, I would just prefer doing it this way. Um, if they give you S and then to make maintain accuracy if they give you data, go ahead and find the S squared and then use that value in the formula. And that ends our process for finding a confidence interval of a population standard deviation.